Okay, so what's going on with the US economy? Some people think that we're about to leave this crisis behind and go into the land of happy-go-lucky. Well, that's not precise. Here's the thing. You can't just flip a switch. It doesn't work this way. Why? Very simply. Let me explain. The US economy has right now the largest deficit it had since World War II, almost $1.5 trillion. That is a big number. And what even is a deficit anyways? So a deficit is essentially your budget. Every house has it. Every family has it. Every company has it. How much you make versus how much you spend. The only thing is a government has the ability to just literally print more money and cover the deficit, which I can't and you can't. And it's a shame, but it is what it is. But the cost of printing more money, as always, things come with a cost. The cost of printing more money is essentially you increase inflation. When you put more money into the market, you're weakening the purchasing power of every single dollar because now essentially there's now more dollars in the market. So essentially that loaf of bread, which costs $2, three months later, it may cost $3. And across the board, it will apply to every single product, which essentially causes me that I earn the same salary as I did three months ago, not being able to provide to my family, which is a horrible situation. And it happened before in history, in Russia, in Argentina, in many different countries. For example, in Russia right now, just to buy a car, you need like 65 million rubles, some crazy amount like that. Uh, it's not a lot of money, but it's just a lot of nominal money. Now, you don't want to get there. I wouldn't use Russia as an example for any type of economic stability or health, healthy economy. But I mean, here's the situation. Right now, the US economy is creating a huge deficit by not being able to generate income. Why? Because governments spend money all the time. They have to buy infrastructure, roads, uh, utilities. They have to pay the municipalities. They have to run the country. It costs a lot of money. And the way governments make money, for the most part, is through taxation. But if everybody's stuck at home, not getting paid a salary, and companies are not selling, not getting any money, nobody is paying taxes. In fact, the US tax revenue was reduced by 55% since the beginning of the COVID-19 crisis, which means that the government is now making 55% less than it did before the crisis. But the expenses are pretty much the same. It costs the same to run the country with or without the crisis, pretty much. So the government is not making enough money. It's getting into deficit and essentially it's printing more money to cover the cost, essentially causing inflation and reducing the purchasing power of our money which is not a good thing. So at this point, the government utilizes, and this is what I want to talk to you today, the brakes and the accelerator of the economy. Governments have one way to control their economy, pump the brakes or hit the gas. It's called the federal interest rates. So the federal bank lends money to other banks that lend money to other people and businesses. And when the federal bank decides that they're going to lower their interest rate, they're essentially making the money cheaper for the banks and that trickles down to the simple people and the small companies, essentially making the money cheaper for them, essentially making them borrow more money and buy more stuff, essentially causing me to think, hey, my savings account now is making only 0.25% a year. That's nothing. I'm going to take it out and buy a new car. So reduced interest rates are like hitting on the accelerator on your car. It's going to drive a lot of money into the market because people are going to Take out the money from the savings account and spend. Businesses are going to borrow. Money is very cheap. There's going to be a lot of action going on. But at some point, the government needs to press the brakes. Because if this happens too much, what happens is we get to the same situation that we're trying to prevent. And that's kind of ironic. But essentially, if you don't pump the brakes on this thing, you'll end up at the same point where you started, which is inflation. If everybody is spending uncontrollably, and just going crazy, the purchasing power of our money goes down. When it becomes a seller's market, which means we all want to buy shit nonstop, prices go up. It's natural. When the demand is crazy, prices go up, which means that I can buy less shit with the same money, which is the same situation that we're trying to prevent to begin with. So essentially, and that's the weird part, this whole system of controlling the market and preventing inflation may cause more inflation if it's not done in the right manner. 
if it's not done in a balanced manner. Because if you just, you know, go all the way throttling down in your car, that's not a healthy way to drive a vehicle. I'm just saying. So at this point, the Fed has reduced the interest rates to near zero. Essentially, they're desperate. Right now, they're trying to get money going. That's why they're buying junk bonds, giving out stimulus checks. They're trying to get the economy started because it's in a complete standstill. It's like a car that is completely stalled. The engine died, the car stalled. So they're pumping the gas, <laughs> trying to get the car started. But if they don't do it in a moderate way, what ends up happening, once the car starts and you keep the foot to the pedal, you may have a runaway economy, essentially ending up in the same place, which is kind of ironic. So here's the thing. You may hear a lot of YouTubers talking about how great it is that the interest rates are so low because now the money is cheap. We can borrow money. We're going to spend. The spending is going to heal our economy. It doesn't work this way. This is a very risky situation. Right now, you have a manic depressive driver sitting behind the wheel of a car with his foot to his throttle all the way down. And if we can convince him to take the foot off the pedal a little bit down the road, we're going to lose control of the car, crash and burn and die probably. I don't know. So the idea of what's going on right now being a magic solution that's going to heal the economy all of a sudden is not accurate. This is a desperate measure. This is a Hail Mary. Reducing interest rates to near zero is a Hail Mary. This is the one last thing the Fed is trying to do before the U.S. dives into a deep depression. So things aren't great. So what we need to understand here is that the market isn't going to magically recover at the flip of a switch once you reduce interest rates. It's a very risky move and it needs to be very carefully regulated. And the idea of carefully regulated and Donald Trump in the same sentence causes me to cringe a little bit. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a YouTuber.